Hi guys, so this week I'm going on my very first ever international trip. So I thought in this video I can show you how I'm gonna do my nails for it, talk a little bit about it, just kind of like hang out, and then at the very end I'm going to leave a little mini vlog of said trip. So the highlights of my trip are going to be at the very end of this video, but first we must do the nails. It's not often I'm able to do a set of nails with any products in any design that I want because I'm always testing things or recreating designs. So I'm super excited and I'm also excited about the trip. So let's just get to it. So my nails are an absolute wreck. So I'm so excited to make them all pretty. So let's get to it. My hands are so dry and my nails are so crusty from just like all the cleaning I've been doing, trying to prepare. I need to do my prep really, really good today because I do not want to risk one of my nails coming off while I am out of town on vacation. That sounds terrible. So I pushed back my cuticles and now I'm just going to roughen up all of my nails really well and get all of that dead skin off and make the surface not so smooth. I had to skip doing a nail video last week because I got myself really good. It doesn't look that bad now, but what had happened was I was putting up a baby gate and while I was drilling into the wall, the drill bit snapped and I accidentally put my thumb into the broken drill bit in the wall just with how I was holding the drill. And I don't think I've injured myself that badly in a really long time. I can't remember the last time that I like accidentally got myself and actually just started like dripping blood, but I was, and so it was really bad, but now it's all right, thankfully, and I can do my nails again. I guess I could have done it with that, but I just wanted to be extra careful. For these nails, I'm going to be using the Apre Sculpted Coffin Extra Long. I don't normally use sculpted nails just because my nail beds are pretty flat, but these ones do seem to fit with a little bit of filing, and I really like them. Here's just kind of like the shape with a pretty sharp C curve. I just feel like they look really nice. So I'm going to get all of these out. It is so rare that we do a full 10 finger set of nails, of the same nails. Wild. I think I mentioned in one of my last videos that I've been doing a lot of prep for these. So I'm going to do that on these, especially because I do have to kind of like shape them to my nail a bit. And that does take a while, but I feel like it's worth it. I pretty much go nail by nail, see how it fits and file it around the cuticle and shape it so that it's nice and flush. This is an old box of tips. I think I've had these for years at this point. So unfortunately they only go to a number nine, which is way too big. So I have to file these down for my pinky pretty good. And then I'm going to etch the inside a little bit and just thin out by the cuticle. So it just blends in with my natural nail a little bit better. And then last step for the prep, the tip primer. And I just do a little bit of this, not necessarily to etch the tip with this, but to make sure that there's no oil or any other residue on it. To etch tips with the primer, you need to like really rub the tip a lot and have the brush kind of like dig in to the tip because what the primer is doing is sort of melting the gel, if that makes sense. And then the brush makes all of the little marks to etch it. This last step is definitely optional, but I feel like it's been making my nails look so much nicer is I'm smoothing out the skin using like a very, very, very smooth bit. These ones are a little bit big, but you get the idea. I need some smaller ones. I have no idea why I was thinking that was the last step because I still have to just like clean off my nails and put primer, but that's not too much work. You'll have to excuse any little misspeaks. It's like 3 a.m. right now and I wanna get these done before I go to bed tonight because I have to pick up the person that's going to be watching my dogs from the airport at like 10 something this morning and I wanna hang out with them a little bit before we catch our flight early, early the next day. So I'm just using a little bit of swipe. Then if you wanna be real extra, you can always go in with a little micro Q-tip. Make sure you got all around the cuticle. I'm going to grab my little gooseneck 
lamp. This one's by Enel Couture and it looks like a little flower. And this one is going to be to flash cure. And then I have my other lamp over here to fully cure. But first a quick little layer of protein bond primer. I have this like weird spot right here and it's not a cut or anything, but it's like orange and I have no idea what it's from and I cannot get it off with anything. It's been there like probably like two something, three weeks. It's so weird. Let's actually apply the tips now. So I'm gonna have my extend gel. So if you guys remember me saying, I actually don't really cure the layer of gel that I put on my nail before I put on the tip anymore. I feel like it was making it bulky that way. So I just put a layer on my nail and then the gel needed on the tip. Then I'm gonna turn my lamp on and we'll put this on and repeat. Did you guys notice no peel off base today? I am not risking it. I do have to fill in quite a bit of gel on these because like I said, they are sculpted and my nails are not. However, opposed to putting it at the edge here, I actually push the gel I'm mainly filling in up at the top because that's where it needs to be filled in on my nails. And I find if I put it at the bottom, it really all just like squeezes out the sides and the bottom. But if I fill it up at the top where it should end up, then it doesn't usually squeeze out. And then I'm going to give these nails a nice full 60 second cure. And they're all on. Don't you guys love this shape? It's so pretty. But now I'm just going to clean up the edges and I'm gonna buff everything and get ready for our gel, which I am so excited to get into. I actually did test nails for this design, although it's gonna go way different than what my test design was. But that's how much thought I've put into this. Now we're ready to decorate. So let me show you my test swatches. Okay, these don't look nearly as cool in this lighting, but I'll insert a clip of how they look with a flash. Now I'm gonna be in the sun quite a bit. Oh my gosh, I realized I haven't even told you guys where I'm going. <laughs> I'll talk about that in a sec. But I'm gonna be in the sun quite a bit, so I want something really shiny, really sparkly, reflective, glittery, hollow, all of it. So what I did with these was I kind of just layered all kinds of different shifting powders, hollow, reflective gels, jelly gels. And I just did random orders of everything. So I'd put like a powder, then a reflective gel, then a jelly, and then another powder. You get it. Just because I wanted to see if you could see kind of like the layers in it and you kind of can. So we're gonna definitely not do a normal order today. I kind of just want it to look kind of crazy and chaotic, but in the best way possible because it's super sparkly. I figure just layering all kinds of different glitter and hollow cat's eye color shifting stuff can't look bad right so let me show you what I picked out to do I'm starting off with a light pink nude base this is again one of the tiny gels that I've been loving I feel like anytime I reach for a gel now it's this brand they're just so good I want these nails to match all of my outfits. So that's kind of why I'm going with a nudish pink base today. I'm going to put a powder on top of this, but I'm actually going to use a different top coat, which I always forget about and then I rediscover and then I use it a ton and then forget about it and then you know, the cycle goes. But it's a milky white top coat from Enel Couture and I love this. It is perfect. I love that it's also a top coat and not just a gel color polish. Polish. Like look at that top coat. Okay, so now let me talk about where I'm going. So I'm going out of the country for the very first time. I had to get my passport for this, which was quite a journey in itself. But we are going to a resort in the Dominican Republic. And it's actually with my husband's job. He has a very professional corporate-y job and his company does a trip once a year and he moved on to the team that goes on said trip recently and so we get to go. These are gonna look a little chunky and the sides are gonna look a little wonky. I'm going to have to file the sides at the end for sure. Okay, so I made a mistake and I put that top coat on way too thick and I also hadn't wiped the sticky layer from this because I forgot it had a sticky layer because some of their gels don't and I just thought this one didn't. 
and so it ended up way too thick with bubbles so I had to file it down a little bit to fix it. So now what I'm going to do is just go over again with that gel just a thin layer to even everything out. The base isn't really going to be seen very much. It doesn't matter if it's 100% even. There's going to be so much glitter and shimmer and whatever going on that you're not going to notice that it's not 100% even five layers down. So I'm gonna see if I can just wipe this sticky layer and put the powder on without doing a top coat. And I'm going to go in with this blue right here. So let's just wipe it and we'll see. Oh, we can. Okay, great. Now I'm gonna go over with the Kira Sky Non-Wipe top coat. Now this is a hollow cat's eye reflective gel. I love this. I feel like it's like all in one. All right, let's do the cat's eye effect. Just pushing all of those pieces into the center. This is gonna look so pretty in the sun. But anyway, I'm really excited, but I'm also nervous. I wasn't gonna go originally because as you guys know, I have four dogs and I'm not sure if I ever actually did a full story on like what happened the first time we ever left our dogs with a house slash dog sitter. But long story short, it went really bad. I think I talked about this actually more in depth on my manager's podcast at one point. So I'll link that below. But essentially what happened was, <sighs> I feel like I'm like still traumatized from it. I don't even want to talk about it. But I saw on my camera, just my one to the front door that they were kind of talking badly to my dogs and I wasn't really getting as many pictures as I wanted. And so we went home a little bit earlier than we were gonna. And when we got home, they would not face us. And we hadn't even said anything about anything. So basically we walked in the house and they were locked inside my guest bedroom and they wouldn't leave. And there was dog accidents everywhere and it was a whole mess. It took like two hours for us to get them to leave. It was terrible and really scary. So now David and I never go anywhere together practically unless we have someone very close to us watching our dogs. And thankfully my best friend literally took a week off of her life to come and watch the dogs because she doesn't think I get out enough. And so she's gonna come and watch them and I trust her with them a thousand percent. So I'm not going to be worried about them at all, which will be super nice. And I'm really thankful that she's gonna do that. So I'm picking her up in like five hours and then we leave later tonight. And I'm actually going to vlog this trip and just leave it at the end of this video. I figured I'd just smush it all in one since these are nails for my trip. And so I'll just, you know, show you guys the trip. But we're staying at like an all-inclusive resort. You know, I'll be honest, things are even nicer when you don't have to pay for it. So super stoked on that. The next layer is going to be a mixture of all of these gels. I love these and if I had it my way, I would put a layer of every single one, but these nails would get so thick it wouldn't even be funny. So I'm just going to mix them all up and get the shiftiest mixture ever. I've been using these a ton and honestly when I got them, I did not think I would get much use out of them, but I thought they were super pretty and actually I've gotten so much use out of them. They're probably some of my most used like glittery shimmery gels now. All right, so I'm gonna get all of this on my palette and it probably is going to look like I'm making a lot cause I am making enough for both hands, all fingers. Okay, I feel like it doesn't look like much when it's just on something really plain. I feel like these really need movement to show how pretty they are, but just trust me on it, all right? So we'll mix all of this up now and we'll put a layer down. So I cleaned up the sides a bit so they are a bit sharper because they were looking a little lumpy, a little chunky. I had originally, ugh, 
wanted to do a rhinestone butterfly design, but I just do not have the time and I'm very sad about it. But it's like 6 a.m. and I gotta pick someone up in five hours and my flight leaves in like 24 hours. So I just need to finish these, but I will revisit the rhinestone butterfly design very, very soon. If I can work it into a design, I will. The constellation is I'm going to do a heart in the center of every single nail. I'm just having a hard time deciding which one I wanna do. These ones match, obviously, like they'll be more subtle, but then these ones will stick out more. I think I wanna go with these pink ones. They both look good, but I think I want them to pop out more. I don't know, let's put them on over and we can see. I have blue ones also, but I don't think the blue goes as well because I think these have more of like a pinky hue. Okay, which heart? This is the time where I really wish you guys could say something right now. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with the clear ones. I really like the pink, but I just think the clear ones match better. For my top coat, I'm gonna use this shiny star top coat and it has teeny tiny glitters in it to just, you know, add more glitter. I'm gonna use my Macar rhinestone gel and I'm putting the top coat over the rhinestone glue and then I'm gonna just smoosh it all in. Okay, that does look very pretty. And here are the nails, I love them. I think that they're gonna look even better in the sun. We will see, but now that these are done, I can really go finish getting ready for my trip. So let's go. We arrived and got through the airport pretty quickly and then got on our ride to the resort and pretty much just watched out the window the entire time because it was so pretty there. So I am just putting on a tiny bit of makeup right now and then we're gonna go and walk around the property. There is so many things here. There's so many restaurants. I just wanna walk around and see it all. It looks super pretty. Okay, let's go explore. The resort was huge and we got to look around right at sunset and so you can see it's so pretty. We ended up going to Hibachi for dinner with some of David's coworkers and then we went and got a snack at like a 24 hour cafe there. All right, good morning. This is our first like real day here. Yesterday was a little bit of a blur because I was so tired. I had slept like two hours and 48, 72 hours trying to get everything ready and I was so tired. But I just went and bought some sunglasses really quick at the gift shop because I forgot to bring some because I don't own any to begin with. There were like five or six restaurants at the resort, but the main for breakfast and lunch was the buffet and they had a ton of options. But what I mainly hit up was the desserts. There were so many different kinds and I tried so many. On the way to the pool, we saw a little parade because it was actually the Dominican Republic's Independence Day. So there were little festivities going on. The weather was so nice. I actually got a tiny bit chilly in the pool, which was a good surprise because I was worried about being too hot. After the pool, we just wanted to check out the beach a little bit. Later this day was a work dinner. So here was my outfit and David got so many nice things said about him. It was really sweet. Even though that was a dinner, I can always eat. So we went to a restaurant afterwards and this is what we had. It was really good. And then at the end of the day, we kind of just were hanging out and were surprised by some fireworks. 
The next day we started out on our excursion, which I was definitely a tiny bit unprepared for, as you can see my eyelash fluttering in the wind. This was a tour through the mountains, and it was just beautiful the whole time. We toured through their cacao plantation, and they showed us the process from start to finish on the coffee. See the shells fly? That's one. Wait. Wait. Look at it. We were able to sample the coffee and the cocoa and some other things. Made by people at the mountains. Hmm. Is it good? Yeah, no, I like it. And then we saw some monkeys. These were squirrel monkeys and they were so cute. This whole tour was like five or six hours, so we started going back about sunset. And when we got back, we went to one of the other restaurants and it was very good. We got many desserts. <laughs> we had a half last day there and we pretty much just hit the beach. Trip home was not great, but I'm not gonna focus on that because the trip was great. So I'm going to just leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this little mishmash of a video and hopefully I will see you next time, bye.